I'm back. Well, here we are again. <laughs> How exciting. What have we got? Oh, I've got one of these things. Let's take a look. Oh, it's one of them fender things. You've seen them before. Yeah. Haven't you? Well, I'm sure you have. And I got this one recently. It's a fender thing. You know, been around a while. A bit like me. <laughs> Genuine product of fender. Certificate of authenticity. Model number 0107118418. Of course you know what that is. No, <laughs> neither did I. No, he has got a serial number, but I won't bother tell you that, except the first two letters which are important. US. Yeah. And they are important on this one, as it happens. Where are they? We'll see about that. Your instrument has been carefully crafted from premium materials for a lifetime of playing enjoyment. Yeah, thank you. Iconic, authentic, original. That's what it says. 31 Cessna Circle. Something to do with aeroplanes. Let's hope they fly okay. Now along with that, uh, that little certificate, you get one of these, which is really going to give things away. Well, you've probably read the title, but don't worry about that. You might never have seen one of these before. Yeah. It's a tremolo bar. Or a trem. Or a whammy. Well, call it what you like. It's got a few names. Let's put it away. Enough of that frivolousness. Let's take a look at what we're really talking about. Well, it's down there. I can see it from here. It's pretty cool, actually. And you can see some light. Yeah. It's a Stratocaster. Or a Stratocaster, as they say in England. <laughs> but this is no ordinary one. This is a Ingve Malmsteen. Stratocaster. Now, if you've never heard of him, don't worry about that. He's one of these neoclassical guys that can shred faster than uh, than a paper mill. Yeah. So you might want to do that, but there's a bit of a problem with Ingve or Ingwi, if you say it wrong. Yeah. Well, his problem is it's all to do with the neck. Let's have a look closer at this. Uh-oh, <laughs> oh, what's Tony done? There's no neck. <laughs> well, why would I do that? Why would I take the neck off? Well, in reality, I didn't take the neck off. I actually bought it like this. And for good reason. If I go and buy one of these in England with the piece of wood for the neck, believe it or not, did about £2,100. That's about $2,500 in England. It's a horrible place to be. If you're in the States, you don't know how lucky you are. I think they're about 1700 and something plus tax. That's very different. But here I am in England, so I decided to buy one of these. Now then, I won't go into depth about what happened, except to say, when I bought it from the USA, I had problems, and I'll be making a separate video about that. Yeah, I'm sure anybody who hasn't had any problems with importing goods, more recently, the last couple of three years, couple of years, uh, won't have much of a clue of what can happen. But I do, and I did, and I won, and I'll tell you how later on another video. But back to this one. Now, you can think of this as a almost semi-review of a Malmsteen Strat. It's only semi because the other bit's missing. No problem, I have that in hand and underway. Yeah, and the solutions will be arriving. But they might not be the solutions that you might think. Now anybody who knows what a, a, a Malmsteen Strat is knows about the neck. And the neck's got a sort of hollowed out or scalloped out wood between the frets. Now that's not a problem unless you try and play on it. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Actually, a lot of people can use them, but 
I've had two Malmsteen Strats over the years and strangely I sold them both. And uh, you should be asking me now, what's this idiot doing buying this one? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there is method to the madness. Or, as my wife said just this morning when we were out shopping, there's madness to my method. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit more about that neck before we go really skadoodling into having a look at what the body's about. Well, the neck, as you can see on the screen now, it's substantially scalloped out all the way down. It's not one of these half a jobs. It's the real deal. In fact, it's as scalloped a neck as any that I've ever seen. And they make them in maple and they have them with rosewood fingerboards as well. So you can take your pick. And off you go. As you can see by the pictures, uh, it's also got the large headstock from the early 70s, end of the 60s type of thing. You know, the marketing uh, wood, <laughs> we'll call it, uh, where they made the headstock bigger to put a bigger logo on. There's nothing wrong with that. Personally, I don't mind it. It's good enough for Jimi Hendrix. Trust me, it's good enough for you and it's more than good enough for me. Yeah, I like it. But I'm not fixed on having a, a, a large or small headstock on this guitar. I don't really care about that. But you might care about buying a Malmsteen if you try and play one of them necks. Because you can get used to it, but if you use a chord, for example, and you just press on very, very well as you normally would, <laughs> that's really the problem. Uh, yeah, you'll be pressing the strings out of tune. Uh, now, if you do what Malmsteen says, or does, he uses 8 to 46 hybrid strings. Now, 8s on a neck that's scalloped out like that will be difficult at the best of times. But hey, you can get used to it, if you want to. Like I said, I had two of them, and I never really did quite get used to it, because when you're playing... Uh, it's so easy to over uh, press and end up with an out of tune tone. Uh, I'm out of tune most of the time, but don't worry about that. Trust me, this could help me be even more out of tune. So uh, there's a question there that we're going to come back to a bit later. And I'll be convincing you why you should be buying a Malmsteen Strat stop after you've seen this. <laughs> Not before. Don't go buy one before because the chances are you'll pull it apart and sell the bits. You don't want to do that. That's what this is all about. Isn't it exciting? Something different that you've never seen before. Now there's another thing about Malmsteen strats that some of you might not know, even if you play one today. Yeah. You might be a Malmsteen fanatic, but you might not be. But these guitars over the years, they've been around a fair old number of years, and they did used to come with a small headstock. Now, now then, a small headstock or a large headstock. But in either way, uh, they're both strats. That's the thing. And as well as having the small or large headstock, there's something else that's changed as well. These YJM pickups that it says here very proudly, YJM on each one of them, used to be made by DiMarzio, but they weren't called YJMs, they were called something else, doesn't really matter. Call them what you want. They still fender pickups, sort of. But Ingve recently, well reasonably recently, I saw its video on YouTube and he was talking about how that, in his words, not mine, how that DiMarzio never actually got the tone that he really wanted. Now that could be a marketing thing or not. And according to Ingbe, he went off to uh, Seymour. Hey C, I need my pickups changing. You can hear him now. I want to see pickups. No, I can't do it. But anyway, he said, I'm unhappy with these Demarzios. Can you make me a pickup like I can hear in my head? So Seymour set about making these pickups and apparently, it might be hearsay, it might be bull. Yeah, it might be. Uh, yeah, apparently Seymour made up to 100 pickups getting this tone that Ingve has heard in his head for a long time 
what never got it with DiMaggio. I don't know the answers with that. It might be just switching from one guy to another. Maybe the other one paid more money. I don't know the answers. You can go and figure that out yourself. But I've actually got two different necks coming. One's a uh, rosewood. I had to buy that in England, but that will become more obvious a bit later in another video. And the other one's uh, maple, and uh, that was bought within Europe. Uh, it, in either case, they're both genuine USA Fender necks. So they're not the Mexican ones or the real cheap crap. or They're not even Warmoth. The whole guitar is going to end up being Fender, which makes a change for me. But uh, that's good. So as we move down the video, you're going to see whichever neck I settle on or we agree with. So let's go and have a look at this now, close up and personal, uh, in a way that you probably never really looked at one that close. And uh, there's nothing really spectacular or dramatic, but it is interesting stuff. And, and if you've never seen a Malmsteen Strat or played one or anything else to do with it, it might be useful for you to take one of these bodies, like I am, and do what I do as opposed to do what everybody else does. Because I tell you now, you will not have seen a video doing what I do with this one. There's no ifs, no buts. This is the only one on YouTube. And it's probably one of the only real reviews on YouTube that go on. You know, we've seen all the, uh, the fake reviews, right? I'm not selling anything. I actually paid for this. And the next, yeah. So there's nothing to sell and nothing to gain, which is uh, a very important aspect of any review. Bear that in mind. So what I want to do now is to zoom down close and let's have a quick run through. I'm not going to spend forever on it, but a quick run through on uh, what a Malmsteen body and the rest of it is like when you buy one and there's no neck. Yeah. Well, here we go. There's uh, not much to look at if you've seen strats, or is there? Well, actually, there is something to look at. First thing about this guitar is it's got this colour here that is like the Malmsteen strat that most people have seen if they've watched him. Especially from the, quote, olden days when he used to be a pretty awesome player. Well, he still is in his own way, but uh, it's all relative. Yeah, so this is the preferred colour to me, might not be to you. I've had sort of, uh, I think I've had candy apple red ones. I forget the other colour, it's a long time ago, but I've definitely had a candy apple red. So in any case, here we are with the front of the Malmsteen Stratocaster. That looks just like any old Strat, like I said, except for that nice butterscotch colour. I've always related that colour to being uh, Malmsteen, no matter what anybody says. And I haven't got Ferrari stickers on it and things like that, but to be honest, I don't care. Well, let's have a look a bit closer at this one. You've got the standard sort of place where you put your lead. Nothing's changed there, that's for sure. And you've got, basically, a pretty standard end of the 60s, early 70s, uh, you know, tremolo unit. You can see it. Fender, 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 Fender. That's what it says. Nothing special there. We've got the pit guard or scratch plate, somebody calls them. Some people call them that. Just like all the others, basically. It's an 11. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 screws on them. So, it denotes a particular era, long after the 50s. It's a three-layer pit guard, and it's got its Fender, made in Fender USA, sticker on it. This has still got the, uh, the sealer that you get, you know, the sort of see-through, sort of plastic on the top. I haven't bothered to take it off yet, but don't worry, we'll get there. Then we've got these YJM pickups. Now the thing is about these YJM pickups, if you look at them, you'll see that the two middle, uh, we'll call them magnets, for want of a better word, 
the two middle magnets stick up substantially higher than uh, you see on a lot of strats. And, you know, these two down the end are substantially lower. Yeah, it's definitely a magnet. Look at that. See that? But on this one, these two are a little bit higher. So those are low, those are low, and these are higher. Bit weird. Maybe this one's set wrong, but I doubt it somehow. Made by Seymour Duncan, like I said. And these are the YJM version. Many people say they don't sound different than the DiMarzios. Well, maybe they do or they don't. That's a subjective thing. Now, you'd look at the rest of this and you'd say, well, it's just like any other strap. You know, what's different about that? Well, there are some things that are different. Number one, they're supposed to be uh, like a, a very easy to turn knob. To me, it feels just like any other strap. I have to be honest. And this tone here, there's a regular tone control that you find on every strap. None of these, by the way, pull. Nothing like that. Nothing as elaborate as that. But this one down here, it's sort of clicked into place. You see that? You've got to really get some pressure on it. Listen. Well, you don't hear it, but you can certainly... It's, it's, it's really tight to get going, and once it does go, it's just like all the others. But when it's right at the end, that sort of... It's an equivalent to sort of taking it out of circuit. That's what that is. Well, that's really the front of the guitar. Not really much else to look at there, except that this is just a three-way switch. Just like Ingve's. Now, if you're one of these that likes to set it in the middle, well, you can do that if you want to fiddle around a bit. Or you could take this one off and put a, a five-way on. Um, personally, I'm going to leave it as it is because I'm usually there or I'm there. And uh, that's about it, isn't it? Forward and reverse. Yeah. And once again, when you get to the, the back of this guitar, there's really not much to see. I could screw this off. But I have to be honest, underneath there, there's three springs... Uh, I think I've got a photo somewhere, which I might put on the screen. But to, in, in any case, there's three springs underneath. Say that fast. And uh, it's a single layer back plate, which looks sort of out of the place compared to the one at the front, which is three ply. This is single ply. It's still got the little sticky stuff on. It's got, this particular body's got a, a real deep cutout. It's probably like all the others, but I don't know. It just looks uh, looks slightly more deep to me. Maybe I'm wrong. And there's another thing as well. On the uh, Ingve Malmsteen Strat, the mounting for the uh, neck is rather different than uh, most of the strats. You'll notice that the screws, there they are, that are used for the Malmsteen neck are just ordinary machine screws. Let's put that down. Yeah, the machine screws. And that's because in a Malmsteen neck, in there, uh, there's inserts in the neck for these particular machine screws. Let me get that back out now. So that's great for every neck that's a Malmsteen neck, and it's not so great if it's not a Malmsteen neck. But we'll come back to this later. Get over there. There's very little else to see on this guitar, with one exception. Let's twizzle it round a bit. And you can see it right there. It uses Dunlop strap locks. So they're there, fitted by Fender from the factory. And uh, that's because they're exactly the same ones that Malmsteen uses. Yeah. So that's a, a sort of very quick rundown of what you get by way of a Malmsteen Strat. Uh, you've seen a little picture or two of the back of these pickups. And that's a very important aspect. But the rest of it, the particular wiring and things like that. And for the amount of money I paid for this thing, uh, yeah, it's probably worth what I paid. Uh, the taxis and the shipping were another story. But uh, overall, it's still cheaper, for sure, than going and buying a Malmsteen Strat in the UK. 
Yeah. And by the way, I never did find anywhere where I could buy a Malmsteen neck uh, new from Fender in the UK. Seems that they're not for sale. So there you have it. A bit of a close-up of a, a Malmsteen Strat. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting stuff. You can go and buy these pickups separate. I guess you could buy a really cheap Mexican body or even cheaper, you know, third party. You could buy one of these cheap or a third party one and you could wire it however you want. And yeah, you can do all that sort of stuff. But I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to go and get what is exactly a Malmsteen Strat, exactly one. So I wanted the sound without the aggro, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, for that reason, I opted against going and finding a, uh, a scalloped strap neck. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody anywhere, like I said earlier, put a standard neck on a Malmsteen strap because there are one or two advantages of doing that. Contrary to what some people will have you believe, listen, playing a, a, a scallop neck isn't always a good idea. It isn't for me at least, and I'm sure it isn't for, for lots and lots of guitarists. And it would stop them buying this guitar as it is hanging on the shelf, on the wall, for your $1,700 or $1,800 or your £2,200. If you're not a Malmsteen fan by default and you hate scallop necks, trust me, you might then uh, there is no alternative really other than hacking away at your own guitar. The fact is, uh, by buying a body that's absolutely brand new, and I've got the certificates and all the rest of it, I could fit any neck on there. Now there's a thought. The thing about the body though, coming back to it, is you're going to get probably the Malmsteen sound and that's a combination of a number of things, such as the wiring, things like this switch at the bottom, or this knob, and things like these specific pickups with a particular type of this, and you know, so on and so forth. So it could be a good idea to want to achieve a Malmsteen sound without the Malmsteen scalloped aggro. Nobody's done it. Just go and check YouTube. Oh, they will do it now, but don't worry. That's how they are, isn't it? Copycats! <laughs> oh, one last thing, just before we move on to necks and things. Uh, I did mention earlier that you get strap locks. They come with it, already fitted, which is a nice touch. But with a Malmsteen strap, you also do get a, a sort of a tweed case. You've seen them, the real one, G&G, &G, I think they are. And you also get a, a Malmsteen strap, which looks a bit like leopard or something like that. And I ain't got one of them either. They didn't send that with the body. They did send the certificate, but they didn't send the rest of the bits and pieces. So, other than this. And they, they also did send, one, one more thing I, I should cover. They did send that, which looks to me like a really thin third party non Malmsteen strap neck plate, cheap and nasty. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention where I got this from. Uh, Stratosphere Parts, www.stratospheparts.com. Yeah, they seem to be taking guitars and pulling them apart. Mr. Gurney, I think his name is, something like that. And uh, yeah, they're pulling them apart and selling the bits. So this was one of the components off a Malmsteen Strat. I suppose the other one was the neck, but they didn't have the neck there and I didn't really want the neck. So this was the important bit for me. And I think it was about, oh, X hundred dollars, five hundred dollars or something like that. Maybe a bit more than that, give or take. But it's still an awful lot cheaper, no matter how you look at it. Even in England, by the way, it's cheaper to buy it from him. Well, okay, let's go a bit further. I did talk about uh, Fender neck plates and the neck plate that came with the body was just a plain old nasty looking thing. Well, <laughs> I've got some bad news for you. 
that's the one that the uh, the Malmsteen strap comes with. Just a plain old horrible looking thing. Not at all like the uh, 60s, 70s one, which I do believe did have the F on it. So I've got one with an F on. What I want to tell you about these plates is that uh, they're all very thin plates. They're not really uh, the thicker stuff that you see around. They're all pretty thin. And I noticed something else as well when I bought this. I thought, oh, it must be me. But no, it isn't. When you look at these, uh, these screws, I'll probably show you close-ups of most of this stuff. When you look at these screws that they come with, those screws have changed from the earlier ones. If you go and have a look at the, uh, the custom shop neck plates, maybe on uh, stratospereparts.com, which is where I looked, you'll find that uh, on the real deals, they've got a sort of piece with no thread. And on these things, which are also supposedly the real deals, they're just like uh, machine screws, you know, they, they have a thread all the way down type of thing. Well, what can I say about that? Well, what I can say, what can I say? <laughs> what I can say is it says specifically made in USA, so they can't blame the Chinese or the, I don't know, whoever else you want to blame, right? So I wanted to get a bit of an overall view. <laughs> and, and I've got one of these here. One of these other ones. It says here, Fender Corona, California. And you know what? This is much thicker than the one that's got the letter F on. In fact, it's, I would say this one's twice the thickness. That's the good news. The bad news, the screws are just as bad as on the other one. This is part number 099-144-6100, which is exactly twice the thickness of the F uh, plate. This plate is the Fender Corona California plate. And I think this one's the best plate. These guitars had the F plate on the back of the uh, the back of the neck, you know, on the plate. Whereas, well, this one it comes with doesn't has nothing. That's a bit weird. And uh, yeah, the Fender Corona one's too new, so I might end up on the the F plate. We shall see. I just want to mention another thing as well. You know when we were looking at this closer up earlier and I got to this tone switch and it, it has a distinct click here, doesn't it? It goes tight. And what that's about is taking it out of circuit in effect. Well, I went and had a look at my 2008 American Standard Strat and it has exactly the same thing on it. Exactly the same one. Same everything. Fancy that. So that's not unique to this guitar, by any means. I think I've seen it on others as well. But it was just interesting that that particular design goes back to 2008, at least on the strats that I've got. Now, thinking about necks. <laughs> no, not what's next. Necks, like this one. There's some over there, actually. You're going to see them in a second. But let's think about them for a, a few minutes. The Malmsteen Strat has been known to have a number of different necks depending where the thing's made and how deep the uh, scallops were and things like that. Well we're not interested in the scallops but we are interested in putting a, a different neck on here which is part of the aim of an objective of the actual whole video. How we can turn this Malmsteen Strat into one that an awful lot more people would use, could use or would use. Uh, not everybody likes the uh, the scallops, as I keep saying, you know. So, these necks, some of them have got the big headstock. You've seen it, probably a picture up there now somewhere. Mm. Up there. Well, the small headstock, up there. But the thing about them headstocks is that, well, actually, other than being a bigger or smaller piece of wood, uh, there's not much difference except in one of them they have the little bullet at the top for adjustment. In fact, Ingves has got the little bullet, but he hasn't always had that, uh, well, according to Fender. <laughs> I think they've always had the, uh, the brass uh, nut. 
Maybe. <laughs> Don't correct me. It doesn't matter. Trust me, it doesn't matter. But that's some of the things. And also, they've got uh, maple or rosewood topped necks uh, in their scalloped formats. They've never released one that isn't scalloped. I'm going to be doing it now. I'm the first. I must be. <laughs> Nobody else would be this stupid, would they? Yeah. Yeah, they would, actually. Uh, so, I haven't seen it anywhere, by the way. I haven't seen this done. So, we've got a couple of necks to look at now. And then we'll make a, a bit of a decision on what we're going to do with this. And then we'll move forward with this guitar. So, I'll go get the necks now. And we'll have a close-up at each neck. The necks that I happen to have got and then make a few decisions. But we'll have a close up the next, which I think is important. Well, here we go. The first neck. <laughs> you can see it's a large headstock. End of the 60s, early to mid 70s, I think it was. But this one actually is a four bolt hole, four bolt fastener, should I say. Or screw fastener even. It's rosewood. I think it's a nine and a half inch uh, radius on this one. 22 frets so I'm cheating a bit because the Ingve one I think has only got 21 on it. I could be wrong about that but don't correct me. <laughs> it's got a bone each, uh, I say bone, could be plastic, not, <laughs> could be either. It's got locking tuners yeah, there they are, as standard. You can see also that this is a US neck. And I'll be putting little pictures up as we go. Uh, this one was made on December the 5th, 2017. You'll also notice that there's two string trees, whereas on the Ingve one, it had the old fashioned uh, piece of bent metal. And there's only one string tree. I'm not that critical. I don't think the Yngwie's got this either, but it doesn't really matter. It's an American-made neck. Feels really nice and comfortable. It's got that vibe about it, even though it doesn't actually have the bullet that we talked about. It has the light wood insert, so we can adjust the neck. This one second hand cost me about, I think, £330, so it's not cheap. Give or take. Well, here it is. It's, uh, like I said, it's rosewood. It's got a nice set of frets on it, by the way. Nicely finished at the edges. Like you get on fenders. Most fenders are like this, especially if you get the American necks. I think they're just a bit more uh, careful with the, you know, the making of the neck than uh, maybe some of the others that you'll see out there. Yeah, so it's a rosewood. It's got white inserts. Look like supposedly clay, but they won't be. And when we move down the neck, uh, you can see the type of nut that's in there as standard. You can see the hole for the adjusting. And this is how the neck came when it came off a guitar. Flipping it over, you can see it was made in 2017. And that's the rest of the number, 031600, which doesn't add up when it comes back to the uh, certificate that's over there. But, to be honest, I don't really care. Right, the body's the certificate number, that's how I'll view things. Uh, locking tuners, as I said. Very nice. It's a very nice uh, matte sort of... Oh, it might look a bit shiny on there, but it feels matte. It's got its skunk stripe, stripe down the back, it's hard to say. Came off line two. You can see where it's been fitted before. Somebody's peeled the, the number off, but that doesn't matter either. But you can see also the date there might be a little bit out of Yeah, but you get the idea. Yeah, 22 frets. It's all there. It's all nice. So let's go back up on that one. So as you can see, I did want that sort of vibe a bit like the Yngwie uh, original, but without all those hollows. So what else did I do? By the way, I'm not sure if I said, but this came, uh, it did come off eBay. Mm. Yeah. Let's take a look at the next neck. 
So that's a different story. Oh my God. It's a fender box. So it came from the Netherlands and it came to Toman or Thoman, Toman I think it's pronounced, and it ended up with me. So it is actually a brand new neck. Let's have a look what we've got. I can't wait, can you? <laughs> and you might be surprised, it's in another box. <laughs> yeah, fender genuine replacement. It's supposed to tell you what it is, serial numbers and the rest of it. Come on, this box doesn't. And it's wrapped well enough. Oh, yeah. You get a piece of paper on how to fit a neck. Well, that might come in handy at some stage for somebody, but it won't be for me. So, this is exactly how it comes. Oh my god, what have we got here? Well, what we've got is a smaller headstock, that's the first thing. And we've got a very shiny maple fretboard. Okay, well, here we are down at the, uh, the business end of the uh, maple neck from Fender. It's, uh, it's a genuine, quote, replacement part, which is, I find quite interesting, really. By the way, this cost me, this was quite expensive. It was brand new, though. It's about £385, which is about... Knocking off for $500, maybe about 480 or something like that. But do it, do understand that that includes 20% tax, whereas the American price doesn't. So overall, it's not that bad. Frets, not bad. It's a nine and a half inch radius, like I said before. I think it's a 43 mil across the nut. It's a 22 fret neck, again. This one was made on June the 18th, 2019. So it isn't that old. Uh, as, I, as I make this video, we're nearly November 19. So it's never been anywhere, really. I don't know if you can see the shine on this neck. Uh, yeah, you can now. It's very, very shiny on the front. Just like they used to make them, I guess. I'm not sure they make them like that these days. Maybe they do. <laughs> well, they must do. There's one here. <laughs> Let's turn it over and have a look at the back. And you can see that this one's been actually machined for three types, <laughs> or two types, of uh, fitting. Strangely, it is one thing. They always have these little circles on these at this side. You see that? I don't know what that's about, but it's obviously something to do with making it. We've got the skunk stripe down here. And as I turn this, you can see there is a sort of sheen on it. It's not glossy like the front. In fact, it's, it's, it's almost matte, matte finished. Yeah, very interesting stuff. The date was, let's see if I can get that on camera. It was basically June the 18th, 2019. Now, here we are around the back. As I said, it's a smaller headstock, and that doesn't particularly phase me or bother me. In fact, the first Malmsteen Strat had a smaller headstock. Fancy that. I think Ingves always was with a bigger one, but uh, the first issue was a smaller one. Interesting, huh? But you can fit those tuners on here, because these are pre-drilled by Fender, and they'll just fit in. When we turn it over, you can see the gloss on there. I mean, it's coming straight off the lights, but it's very high gloss, and it, as I said, it's on the, actually on the fingerboard, for want of a better word, because there's no actual fingerboard. These dark, dark uh, markers, as opposed to the other one being light, doesn't really make much difference to me. This one's got a, a light nut, again, from Fender. That's how it came. And it's got another wood insert there. It's got the strap thing on the front. It's all very nice. All feels good. In fact, it feels pretty awesome. The frets are finished really well. Yeah, might need a bit of leveling or something because it's a new neck. But uh, we'll see about that, won't we, later, if this one is uh, going to end up on there. I might fit one and then fit the other and show you both. <laughs> or I might not. Just depends what mood I'm in. Anyway, there it is. You can see it's a USA made. I know it's upside down, but don't worry about that. US 1905. 6977. Oh, interesting. So the reality is, it's all down 
to what you fancy. Remember, we're trying to get away from the scallops. We're not trying to put some on there. So whether this is a big headstock or a little headstock, in my case, doesn't really matter that much. It might not matter to you either. But it is, uh, it's down there. It's based on a, a sort of end of the 60s, early 70s strat, isn't it? That looks a bit more like it, doesn't it? If I'm going to the trouble of these uh, neck plates, I should really go to the trouble of the neck. What a mad neck. Very little wear. So, what would you do at this point? Would you choose this one? The 60s, 70s neck? Or would you choose this one? Which could still be a sort of... Well, not quite a 60s, 70s neck. Why, no one isn't quite. But you get the idea. A more modern design. Or is it a more older design? You take your pick. Uh, yeah, the now and the earlier. That's what you could call that. The now and the earlier neck. Yeah. In any case, it's, uh, it's really nice and light. What's the weight in them? There's not much in them, really. They, they're very similar. That's even got its tuners on, so... Yeah. Don't forget, tell me what, you, what you'd be fitting right now. Which one? Come on, boys. Now then, I've been a big fan of Yngwie since, uh, actually, Rising Force. That album where he's holding the guitar up, you know, like so. Oh, my God. I remember listening to that. I am a Viking and all that stuff. Oh my God, he had some amazing guitar on there. And he's done that ever since, hasn't he? He's just carried on, blasting all this stuff out that no human could ever play. Well, some people do. Some very good copyists, but uh, I'm not one of them. In fact, I can't play Ingve stuff. And as for the arpeggios, don't bother. I can't do it. So you'll never see that from me. But that doesn't mean that uh, the Malmsteen strap down there would be no use to me, because actually it would. Uh, it has its own sounds, it's, it's built to a sort of 70s, end of 60s style, and yeah, that's good for me, because I haven't got one. And so I could sort of bend into either of these necks. So, yeah, that's the lowdown on the necks. Now, just before we do get down to it, I thought I might mention the guy I buy this stuff from. I have bought quite a bit off him over the years, and he's never let me down, so sometimes I like to just talk about them. It's a good idea. They've got to stay in business and make some money. Uh, this is a company called First Avenue Guitars. Does it on PayPal. No eBay fees, none of this, none of that. And you can get, if you're in England, you can get basically any Fender bits. So he can be a useful guy. Sometimes he's got to order them, sometimes he hasn't, but he's a useful guy. And by the way, I'm not paid to do this. It's purely from my experience with the good people as opposed to the bad people. And uh, the guy that was supplying the parts for a recent war modification let somebody down. And uh, yeah, we'll see about that, won't we? Anyway, back to this guy, First Avenue Guitars. John Southwart, I think that's how it's spelled. Genuine Fender Parts Supplier. 01274 962 975. And his, his email is John Southwart at hotmail.co.uk, firstguitars.co.uk. So he's worth talking to if ever you need any genuine bits. Whether he's better or cheaper or the, or the rest, I don't know. I can only tell you that the stuff I bought off him has always arrived reasonably quickly and it's always been first rate. Yeah, none of this second arm junky stuff kicking around. So here we are back. I guess if I want the 60s, 70s vibe. It's going to be the 60s, 70s vibe neck. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So, there's the body. Here's the neck. You don't slide it in like that. You put it in at the top. And this one's pretty, pretty loose actually. As far as necks go. It's like some of the ones I've done. But uh, it'll be okay when it's screwed in there. The screws from underneath of the rest. Now, right off the bat, there's a problem. And I, I had a good idea there would be. Well, the neck's actually on there. 
if I just can turn continue if I just continue turning these they will continue turning forever because these screws I supplied are not really suitable for this neck because this neck has had the type of screws on that I talked about earlier the ones with the they're slightly thicker and being slightly thicker they fit in the holes that were on this guitar uh, neck from Fender so these new screws I hate them honestly these new screws no matter which ones you get are all the ones that are too thin and yours are going to turn just the same if you fitted a neck before it might be different in the other neck we've got down there on the floor but I'm not interested in that right now I want to fit this neck and it fits quite nice actually I can tell straight off that that's fitting pretty well but the actual uh, <laughs> screws are as bad as you could get yeah and they are genuine quote genuine fender so be aware of that uh, if you come along and you want to have a go at doing this stuff uh, you do need decent screws not the ones provided they're awful okay well oh it's finished <laughs> I didn't show you everything of course but I do want to talk about some of the things that happened along the way you know the sort of junky stuff you can see it's finished got that neck on it the one with the fat headstock the one I bought from eBay it's strung up seems to work however there were a few problems that I encountered while I was doing this getting this neck on you'd think it'd be dead easy fender neck fender guitar all easy right well actually it wasn't easy because the neck actually was second hand from eBay like I said earlier and the problem is when you buy something second hand especially from eBay right I mean it all works good on the screen in fact if you go back a little bit earlier and look at this video of that neck it all looks great there was a little bit of white paint on the tip of the uh, of the neck which came off by the way uh, and the other thing uh, was that the screw holes remember the screws we were talking about and I said well these screws have gone thinner or well, there's no blank bit at the top of the screws well that's how fender supply them today actually I did look a lot further and uh, yeah that's what you get now so you don't get the blank bit at the top from what I can see however the screw holes in that neck had had the wrong screws in somehow and the holes were too big when I fitted the neck earlier you saw me doing that the screws kept going <laughs> now listen <laughs> this is the problem with buying something second user or third user or tenth user uh, from eBay oh. in any case take a look up there and you can see a picture of the neck after I'd taken some drills drilled out the holes where they were put in some new pieces of wood there they are there's one of them glued them in left them actually for 48 hours not 24 and then it came to the redrill time now that can be a bit awkward uh, especially if you haven't got one of them vertical drill machines so let me tell you one of the little Tony tips of how I get around it it's all very simple really here you go well this is what you need you need the right size drill but you need an extra long one and if you look carefully on this you can see that it's got some tape around it about there so all this other bit is the bit that goes into the body well it doesn't go into the body as such what you do is mount your neck push it right the way in make sure it's all the way in and over this side because you've got this sort of funny socket and then use this drill that's been marked to take into account the length of how far the screws will go into the neck and then all you do is you literally drill through the holes that are in the body because they're already there and that'll take the drill in nice and straight so that when you come and put the screws in later 
It's a piece of cake, they just, it's a walk in the park. So there's the little tip. It's not as faffing around with drilling machines and all that rubbish. You don't need to do that. You can do it this way. Because my inserts, my dowels were brand new with brand new smallish holes. I used the thinnest ones of the two sets of screws. The fender supplied some slightly thicker ones with a more coarse thread and some slightly thinner ones with a slightly finer thread. So I opted for the thinner ones because it was a new hole, so to speak. Now I could have carried on down the road of fitting all the bits and pieces, including Ferrari badges and rubbish like that. But I didn't want to do any of that. So this is as near as I'm going to get, except for the brass knot, to a, a Malmsteen Strat that's got no scallops. Yeah. Don't confuse that with scallops, will you? Because you eat them. Wish you do in England. <laughs> now I did set the uh, guitar up with uh, pretty low action. Seems pretty good to me. 9 to 42s, I think they were on this one. And it all plays exceedingly nice. I did the intonation as well, just to check that. And it seemed to be okay, actually. Even though I've adjusted a couple of little things. What more can I say? By the way, on the back, it's a three spring job. Well, that covers this bit. There's not much more to say about it, really. It's on there and it works. <laughs> but there's nothing really suffering. Oh, that out there. <laughs> it's Guy Fawkes time, November the 5th. And the thing about November the 5th is, with a bit of luck, they'll uh, put all the politicians on the bonfire. Yeah. Oh, can I say that? Was Guy Fawkes a politician? I think he was. Well, maybe he wasn't. In any case, he's celebrating Guy. And I can understand why. <laughs> Especially with Brexit. Anyway, we're going to be playing this presently, almost any time soon. If there's any little bits and pieces I've missed, I shall be putting the little uh, pictures up as we go. Uh, uh, you might even see pictures in the wrong place. It's still going out there. Well, all them fireworks. Okay, so let's sum it up, shall we? Remember, I've played it. Okay, well, what do I like and what don't I like? Well, the three ways fine for me. It might not be for you. The uh, full on treble, again, is reasonably fine for me, but I tend to use a wah and kick that in and that could take it over the top a little bit. I like the action of this. I like the general sounds and the neck pickups are awesome. That's one of the things that, uh, that I wanted from this. It's got the old fashioned uh, trim. I'm not worried about any of that. I like the neck, like I said. It's slightly heavy, this guitar, but it's not a killer. I think it's seven and a half pounds or something like that. So it's not too bad. Uh, I don't like these things in the end of the, the body, you know, these Dunlop, whatever they are. You know, the uh, things that stop your guitar falling. I'm not into that. I've got my own type. I don't like this type. And having one like this and all the others like the other way, it's a bit of a shortcoming. But overall, uh, how would I rate it out to 10? Well, bearing in mind there's no scallops on the neck, which is what I wanted. And you might well want. Never seen it done before. Uh, I'd rate this probably at about uh, an 8 or 9, and there's a number of reasons why. Okay, one of the things about this, just before we do, uh, we do move on to the playing, do bear in mind that in England, with its scallop neck, this is about £2,200, that's $2,600 or $2,700. Yeah, it really is that much, but there is 20% tax, but if you take that off, it would be an equivalent to probably about 18 or 19, uh, $1,900. So it's still an expensive guitar, being a signature guitar. But if you was to take the Jeff Beck guitar, which is, I guess, in many ways similar, and it doesn't have the, uh, the scalloping, that's a sort of similar money too. So by making this guitar as I did, with a, with a neck that was well, not really worn out or anything. It's like a brand new neck in many ways, except for those holes. And the body is brand new. Uh, so by doing that, it saved a pile of money. And this overall thing cost me probably 
about $1,200 all in. So to me, it's a good deal. And it's a deal you might consider when you see, you know, because this is a top of the line body. This is not one of them nasty things with the big holes cut out inside. This is like the, you know, the real 60s body in many ways. That's what it emulates. Well, that's about it. I can't really show you any more in here. I've showed you everything that I can. But I still think it's a really good deal, especially for a proper American-made jobby. And the next American made too, so. There you go. Did it did it did it make me play like Malmsteen? No. Could I do those arpeggios that Malmsteen does? No. Problem is I couldn't do them before I had the guitar and I can't do them afterwards. <laughs> and neither will you. So don't buy one of these things even if it's got the scallops and think you're gonna change overnight because I don't think you will and, and and if you're anything like me tell me you're not but if you're anything like me remember I've had two of them before over the years one of the early ones and one with the bigger neck uh, and I sold them both so <laughs> it must tell you something because I don't sell the guitars that I really really like or I can't use it it's usually some problem with them for me if I sell them uh, doesn't mean they're a problem for you. But there you go. The Malmsteen Strat with a standard neck. Well, an American sort of 60s sort of flavour neck. And it all works. So playing's coming up now. Don't forget to go to da 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 TonyMcKenzie.com Loads of reviews on there. I haven't updated in some time. I said I was going to. I didn't. And uh, yeah. Put down in the comments what you think of the tone and whether you think it's different than a regular Strat or whether you're this or whether you're that. And you know, it should all be interesting. So with Bonfire Night blasting off in the background, I can still hear it. <laughs> Get out of here.